In this video, I'm going to show you everything you need to do to be able to edit YouTube videos on your iPhone. Let's jump onto the iPhone and I'll show you how it works. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is pull up iMovie iMovie is a great editor for a variety of purposes. It's definitely an excellent way to edit on your phone. It gives you a number of features that are going to allow you to make a nice clean looking video. As you progress on YouTube, you may need to move into maybe desktop editing or whatever the case may be. But for now, we're going to show you how to do a decent edit on your iPhone. So recently iMovie has changed a little bit. They've added a few new features like Magic Movie and Storyboard to this. For the purpose of this video, we're not going to get into those, but definitely check them out. There's some pretty cool features and you may find use for them, uh, including different how to film different scene shots. Uh, if you're trying to make more of a movie type movie, uh, they have some cool templates in there as well. But we're going to click on Movie at the bottom here. That's going to bring us in. It's going to show us all of our footage. We're going to go to videos, all videos, and that's going to show us all the recent videos that we have recorded. So we're going to select a couple videos I've recorded or done two at the top here. Uh, now, when you go to select your videos, when you highlight one, it'll turn yellow and then you click the check mark to show that that's one you want to include in your project. So. We're going to select the top two. So we've done that on the two at the very bottom of the screen. You'll see that it says create movie two items, two minutes. So we're going to hit create movie at the bottom of the screen. Now, by default, this is going to push you to the end of the timeline. I'm going to explain what everything is on the screen here so you know exactly what we're talking about. But uh, it will put you at the end of the timeline. If you hold your finger down at the front of the timeline, it will push it all the way to the beginning of the timeline. So taking a look at the screen, what you see here, obviously you see the preview of the video at the top, you see a plus mark, you see that button uh, that looks like a triangle pointing to the left, that will also put you all the way back to the beginning. That's another way that you can do it. You have your play button. This is me getting ready for a video and then and then you have the little button that looks like a sideways U. That is the undo button. All very helpful features that you're going to want to become familiar with. Now, when you want to add something to this, you click that plus button and you have the option to go through uh, moments, which are just a kind of summary of your videos and photos on your phone. I usually just go straight to video because that's going to show me everything that is on the phone and that's important. Uh, photos, if you want to pull those in, you can. And also uh, audio is also going to be an important one. You can, in fact, do voiceovers or record right from uh, the app itself. Mostly I will do voiceovers through the app, but if I'm going to record anything, I'm going to do that first and then pull it in. But at the top, we did videos, photos, and everything is the same way. It's just an organization of your videos and your photos. And then audio is going to allow you to bring in music. Now, iMovie has an entire movie library or an entire audio library uh, where you can pull in sounds, download, and bring them into your projects. But what you do, uh, you want to review that and make sure uh, what their terms of service are in terms of how you can use those, uh, whether you're allowed to use them on your YouTube channel, for example, or whether there's any stipulations of how they want you to use those. So look into that. But you can also use a service like Soundstripe and get your own uh, licensable music, and you can bring that into your phone. There is a way to do that. So for example, if I click on my music and I go down to songs, now, this is going to show a variety of music that's on my phone. Just because it's on your phone does not mean that you're allowed to use it. This is basically showing everything I have in iTunes. So obviously, I can't go in and use if I had a million dollars without being aware of their licensing and the rules around that. In most cases, the answer would be no, uh, or there would be a significant cost to use somebody's original music like that. But when you download music from like Soundstripe, where you actually have a license to use it, you can come in here, you can use the search functionality, and you can actually find the one that you have permission to use and pull that into iMovie. So that is a great way to bring in your music. Uh, if you're not familiar with Soundstripe, they basically have a service that lets you do uh, music and sound effects uh, at a pretty decent price per month. You can go to trysoundstripe.today and check them out. Uh, but we're going to head back to the main timeline here. You can see we have the video queued up. And then when we hit play, this is me getting ready for a video. And then I'm about to actually say hi. and 
All right, so that's kind of the beginning of our video right there. So what we wanna do is backtrack to where that started. There's a couple of different ways that you can do this. You can say, okay, if you watch my face, you'll see what I'm just about to talk. You move it back slightly. Then you click on the timeline so it's highlighted in yellow and you click split at the bottom. Now that's going to cut that video into two different pieces. You can click on the one you wanna get rid of and hit the delete button at the bottom. So now, hi and welcome to, see, I messed up. That's good. So you find your good version. Yeah. That's okay, because we're gonna edit this. See, it's like I knew. Hi, my name is Dan Courier, and welcome to another video. All right, so that was our good take. Hi, my So again, we look at, right when I'm about to talk, we back it up, we highlight that, we click split, we get rid of the original, or the, the first half of that. Hi, my name is Dan Courier, and welcome to another video. We hit pause right after that good one is, is done. And what I'll normally do is if I think that's a good take, I'll hit split and I'll hit play. And if I jump right into something else that's good, then we can edit that. Now here, when we've created a split, by default, it's kind of like a jump cut. It's gonna go from the video. that, it's gonna immediately go into the next clip that's there. If you click on that, you'll see at the bottom, you have options for a variety of different transitions. So you have the none, which is kind of like the jump cut. You have theme, which uh, lends itself back to picking a theme in the beginning, which we didn't. You have dissolve, which the video will be very mild because it's actually here. We'll take that that second clip just so you can see what the dissolve here looks and like. Welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to talk about. You see, it kind of just did a, a meld into the next video. So, uh, and then you have swipe. Welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to slides in the next video. You have wipe, which is similar. Into another video. In this video, we're going to. Which kind of very similar to swipe, but instead of it bringing the whole video overlay, it kind of cuts it in half, I think. And then fade. The video. In this video, we're going to. Which kind of fades to black and then pops up with the next video. I tend to use dissolve. It's a nice clean way to match two different videos together. Uh, and get you a nice clean look, especially when you're first starting out. Uh, I use this uh, for a number of videos that I still make just because it's clean, it looks good, it looks like you know what you're doing, and it's easy to do. All right, so when you have a clip selected, if you put your finger on the beginning of it and you hold it down and you move it back and forth, that will shrink or lengthen that clip. In this case, we see that I'm about to start a new thought, so I'm going to move it and watch my mouth to see exactly what I'm about to talk when I think that's a good transition. I'm going to try that out to another video in this video. All right, that was a little early. So if we click on it and we drag it in a little bit more, then we can kind of watch the transition. My name is Dan Courier and welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to talk about X, Y, Z. So stay tuned, click the subscribe button, ring the bell, do all those things and we'll see you. No, that's not right either. Such a great tip to always leave your camera running when you make mistakes then you have a single file to edit it comes in really handy especially when you're doing this in iMovie all right so we have another good part there we're going to get rid of that i don't really have a topic for this video it is simply here that so we can edit the video all right so most of this other we're going to pretend that that's all um not good and then we added another video at the end here We're gonna go with a dissolve. I'm gonna record the ending just so we have two different videos to merge together in iMovie. That's what I just said. I hope you found this video. All right, so again, we're gonna highlight, we're gonna move back, watch when I'm just about, and if you want that jump cut effect or kind of that quick jump cut, we'll leave it with no fade, and then I'll show you what this ends up look, looking like. Kind of get it just as you're about to talk, Get rid of that. It comes in really handy, especially when you're doing this in iMovie. I hope you found that was a little long after I stopped speaking. So we, we if we wanted to be jump, we basically want to start and finish or really finish and handy, start right away. Especially when you're doing this in iMovie. I hope you found this video helpful. Please leave your comments in the. And one of the things you can also do to have a more effective transition is change, especially if you're using the same video. Uh, 
angle the entire time, you can do things like zoom in. I'll show you how we did that in just yes, a minute. In iMovie. I hope you found this video helpful. Please leave your comments in the description below. So it can be a powerful effect. And basically all you do is you click on it to highlight it. In the upper right hand corner of your video, there's a little magnifying glass with a plus. We push that. It says pinch to zoom. And then you use two fingers to decide how you want to frame that video like you see here. So that's going to be a great way to kind of jump in on those cuts. Sometimes when you do like a jump cut and it's the same exact camera angle, it looks it looks kind of jagged. So if you do it this way, it very much looks more intentional because you've changed the angle, you've jumped into a new, uh, a new angle on that and uh, it gives you just a little bit better look. One of the other things that you can do on this is to kind of fake cam camera angles. And the way that you would do this is again, when you zoom in, if you zoom and you slide the video to the side, maybe you want to start the first half where you're on the side of the video and then you wanna to jump to the end of it and say, hey, I wanna move myself to the other side just to create a little, a little interest in that video. Well, you can do that because you zoomed in and you have more real estate to play with. So now what we've done- Andy, especially when you're doing this in iMovie. I hope you found this video helpful. Please leave your comments in the description below and I'll see you in the next video. The funny thing is I said, be sure to leave your comments in the description below, which makes absolutely no sense. And I didn't even notice it when I made this video. But that's not important. We're here to edit the video. If I was actually editing this video and I heard myself say that, I was I would have to re-record that section of the video. But for now, we're going to leave it. We all make mistakes. The important thing to know is how to edit and how to fix those mistakes when they happen. So one of the other things I will show you how to do, which is a little bit different in this case because I have a headshot, but if we wanted to add, I'm going to try to add a video that I'm not in just for... Oh, I'm in it a little bit, but we'll go before I'm in it. We'll just grab a random section. So in this case, we have a video clip. But if you wanted to add a voiceover, you would go to the beginning. You would hit plus. You want to go back from video. We don't want to be in video. We're going to go to the voiceover. And then you see as I'm speaking, that bar is moving to show that it's picking up my recording. So when you click record, there'll be a countdown and it'll show you where it's gonna start and then you can record your voiceover. This is a sample voiceover about a hedge trimmer. Pretty cool, huh? And then you hit stop. You have the option to review. This is a sample voiceover about a hedge trimmer. Pretty cool, huh? If you like it, you hit accept. If you don't, you can retake, click the retake button and re-record it. In this case, we're gonna accept. So now, go. This is a sample voiceover about a hedge trimmer. Pretty cool, huh? Now, depending on that, you may wanna trim it, trim the video down to match your voiceover. Hedge but this can come in handy when you're using B-roll. In this video, we're gonna talk about... So you have a bunch of different things you can do there. You can add in video. So what I did on that video uh, when you're going to do a voiceover, you're going to click on that video and you're going to click on the volume at the bottom. You may be on the little the little scissors. You want to click on the little microphone or the little speaker. And then th then you can control the volume of the, the clip that you have highlighted. So in this case, because we're doing a voiceover, we're going to highlight that clip. We're going to bring its volume down to zero. And then the recording, which was the voiceover, also has its own volume. You can have a little bit of volume from each if you want to. You could bring up the volume on the main clip to like, I don't know, we'll call it 20 and hear it in the background. And you'll see. Do another video. This is a sample voiceover about a hedge trimmer. Pretty cool, huh? So you see you have that flexibility to control that as well. Uh, one of the things you can also do is control the speed of a clip. At the bottom here, if you click this little icon, Changing the display will disable cinematic effect. I happen to record this video with the cinematic feature on the iPhone. So that's why that particular thing came up. But we go like this and we move this little control down the bottom and it'll show you this is normal speed. This is 2x. And then all the options you have down to 1 8th speed. So just. So you can see. The challenge that you have with changing clips that have audio in them, it's going to be very hard to, to do that without messing up your audio. But if you have B-roll that you want to add, uh, which is just simply another video clip, 
typically like this one where you're just showing something that you want to talk over or you want to use it as a transition you can do all that and add that in here as well you can add text to the screen also we're going to take that off of there down at the bottom we have that little t it has some pre-designed text that you can use so if you want to do a title or something like that you can definitely do it you'll see it creates now in this case where it gives you like three different texts you can click on each one and delete it well they've changed that and it's a little funky so we're going to go back we're going to select our we're going to click standard and then we have to click edit and then this is the one and then you have to edit each one and then backspace is the safest way to do that apparently so when you highlight it hit backspace and then hit done so you get rid of all the other text if you just want that one it's a little funky the way they've added it but that's Hi, how it my works. name is dan courier and welcome to another video you can see in that case it's a slow zoom in on the text that fades out at the end if you have a certain section of a clip where you want that text to appear briefly, what you can do is just add a couple cuts in your video. So if we split this here and here, it's still going to play seamless. So stay tuned, click the subscribe button, ring the bell, do all those things. But you can add text to just this one right here. So it just pops up for that part of the video. Ring the bell, do all those things, and we'll see... You can also click on the text here and move it around, which is really nice. For the longest time, it was stuck in one place and you couldn't do anything to fix it, but now they do give us that ability. All right, so when you've completed your edit and you are ready to export your video, you're gonna click on done in the upper left-hand corner. That's going to bring you to this screen. Now you have the option to jump back into edit. You have a, a name for the movie. If you want to, you can click on that and give it a name that you uh, that makes sense to you. So when you go back in here, you'll know which is which. But then at the bottom of the screen, you have the option to share. It's that square with the arrow in the middle. From there, we're going to click on Save Video. Once you've clicked on Save Video, it will show you exporting movie. When this is done, it'll be available in your camera roll. All right, as a quick bonus, I'm going to show you what you do in YouTube to upload this video. So from here, we're going to hit, hit YouTube. We're going to go to YouTube. And then at the bottom of the screen, you're going to click on plus and upload video. There, we're going to see our video in the upper left-hand corner. We can select that video. Dan, shush. And then from here, you're going to click next and go through all the steps to upload to YouTube. So if you have any questions, definitely let me know in the comments below. Are you currently using iMovie or another app? I'd love to hear that as well. And if there's anything that I didn't cover in this video, definitely tell me and I will be happy to make a follow-up. I'll see you in the next video.